Hi there. People have been telling me off and on throughout my life that I should write a book about my life. And a friend of mine once told me a very long time ago that the reason you don't read a lot of books by people who fist fight sharks is because they're rarely the kind of people that go around writing books. Nor do they tend to live a very long time. Um, just broke out the hizzy pipe. Packed me up a nice bowl of keef. And uh, tell a little bit of my story. This is going to go into the story time with Doug series, but it's going to start to become more of a story of my life. But this is one of the defining moments, I would say. Um. I was always pretty nerdy, kind of weird, didn't fit in kid, didn't hang out with the kids at school, had one or two weird friends that I rarely hung out with, kind of always did my own thing, kind of always was off by the side. Even at social gatherings, I didn't really connect with people a whole lot, but I've always connected with plants and I've always connected with animals. So, once upon a time. I had a family of foxes that I used to hang out with. And, um, the guy next door, which in this case was about three quarters of a mile away, shot one and uh, threw the meat away. And tend to hide and hung it up on his truck. And it pissed me off. Because he didn't need to kill the fox. The fox wasn't going after his shit. He went out and hunted the fox out and killed it just for its hair. Which I find disgusting. So, uh. I stewed on that for a while. And these foxes were literally my friends. They would, when I walked in the woods. They would come hang out with me. The, the fucking little ones would come right up and fucking touch me. The bigger ones would get really close and make sure I didn't hurt them. And But they, the bigger ones would never would touch me, the adults. But they'd get really fucking close and they'd take food that I brought. I used to buy fucking little turkey bits and shit like that for them. Right? And they were cool. They are fucking foxes, dude. Foxes are awesome. Well, it bugged me every time I'd see that dude. With that fox pelt in the back of his truck in his window. And then uh, I stopped seeing him. And it kind of worried me. Because I knew about that dude. And sure enough, a couple weeks later, I see another fox pelt in this, this chick's the back of her, the back deck of her car at the, at the gas station. I'm like, hey, that's really cool. Where'd you get that? Just got it from dude. Now, number one, it's illegal to shoot him without a license anyway. Number two, they were out of season if he did have a license. And I know it's not fucking okay to do it the way he did it. So it was really fucking stuck in my craw. I didn't know shit else about the guy. I moved out of that place that really bugged me for a long time. And one night I was with my buddy and we were rolling up across northern Michigan through that same area. And we get pulled over by the sheriff, the deputy. 
And it's that same fucking dude that killed them foxes. And he comes out and fucking starts giving us the rigmarole, gets us out of the car, wants to search the car. There might be a roach in the ashtray, but that's it. Because neither one of us really had any weed. But he's just being a total dick. He didn't remember me at all from being his neighbor because we only talked a couple times. And I never talked to him about the foxes. But he's standing there giving us the rigmarole and he's looking through the car and he don't find nothing. He's giving us a bunch of fucking directives and he gave my buddy a couple tickets. He's got his other buddy there with the dog. And, you know, and he fucking blah, 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 blah. But it's all pompous ass. And I looked it right in the fucking eye as he was talking to me. And I said, can I say something? He said, what? I said, I remember those foxes. I remember each and every one of them foxes and their attitudes and the way they behaved. They were my friends. He murdered them. Have a good night. That dude hunted me, used fucking state resources to try and track me down all over the place, stalk me, get information on me, and turn it over to the authorities wherever I was. He was after me for the longest fucking time because of that, and it was a very defining moment for me. Because it's the first time I'm consciously aware that police and the justice system in general can and will weaponize itself against you and destroy everything that you touch. And believe me, he made me acutely aware of it. Okay, I had to answer that text and... Enter the coupon for bacon at Safeway for my buddy because we share a number for the coupon thing because I don't use gas. And he doesn't buy groceries much, as much as I do. But anyway, that cop was after me for years <laughs> because of that. Because I made him feel about that much big. <laughs> it wasn't until much later when they started to come after me for weed all the time that I realized it wasn't just a dirty cop or a dirty department or cops in general, but it was the government. This is how I came to this realization. It just became real to me that my government hated me and oppressed me and threw me in a dungeon and tortured me and took my things from me. Even though I had done nothing that hurt anybody. I didn't deprived anybody of their rights, of their safety, of anything. I hadn't put anybody at risk. They attacked me, assaulted me, imprisoned me, kidnapped me, over and over. Why anybody who's lived through the last 20 years is still talking about Joe Biden and Kamala Harris is fucking beyond me. Two things have been very obvious to me since I read the Federalist and the Anti-Federalist papers. Politicians are all full of shit 
A government is designed to protect the economy. Full stop. End of sentence. The economy. The most important thing about you, the individual, to our government, is your social security number. Your national debt, national debt, national debt. The national debt, the national debt, the national debt. Well, we all know how debt works. You can only have the amount of credit as you have collateral. So what is this collateral that we're using to accrue a national debt? Huh? Alabama? Pine trees? Gold? You, dummy. You. You're the collateral. Your social security number. USA Inc. The most powerful force in all of American law, all of constitutional law, is the freedom to contract. And the most powerful illusion in this country is that you have to do the contract. You have to sign the contract. You have to join the contract. In order to travel on the roads, you need to do commerce with the state. Fourth Amendment says I have the right to travel freely about my nation. You know? Ah, you signed a contract to do commerce with the state in the form of a driver's license. Now you're a driver of a motor vehicle instead of just a traveler with their private property. You see the difference? You can't imprison a citizen with their private property who is traveling. It's against the Constitution. It's unconstitutional. And they couldn't do it to you if you hadn't signed the fucking contract. You know how many times I've been caught driving? I don't. I have even had a cop take me to jail for it, find out he couldn't hold me and have to cut me loose. Boy, was he mad. Because it was the third time he'd caught me. Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. The biggest fine I ever paid for it was $500. Why? Because I never signed any fucking contracts. I had a judge in Tennessee try to court order me to get a driver's license. <laughs> I went to Mexico. Fuck him. <laughs> that shit's never gonna stand up anywhere. You can't court order somebody to fucking sign a contract. And you ain't your goddamn cotton picking communist fucking mind. Fuck the fucking fuck off, you fucking fuckhole fucker. You're retarded. USA Incorporated. It runs like a business. It runs on money. Any and every legislation. A real health care bill would have abolished insurance companies. Period. Period. What service do they provide? Tell me. Tell me what service the insurance companies provide. Have you ever seen the difference between a bill you get if you pay cash and the bill they send to the insurance companies if you have high rate insurance? And the bill that they send to the insurance companies, if it's government insurance. Because I know people who have private insurance, who their whole bill for surgery and everything to get their false teeth was $1,800 to 
Mine was almost eleven grand. <coughs> because it was on the state's dime. For fuck's sake, it's a racket. It'd be a real pity if something happened to you. That's insurance. They weren't trying to solve the problem. They're trying to politicize the problem so they can continue to politicize and fucking be politicians and political verbal dial fucking real fucking and then return a lot of indignation and fucking yeah, oh, yeah, god damn it, the will of the people. Bunch of pompous, pious, asshole idiots that don't even understand the motherfucking Constitution that thinks that four horsemen are going to ride down out of the sky blowing a fucking giant horn with an angel and the world's going to come to an end in a big fireball. And I'm supposed to believe these motherfuckers are pulling the levers, the mechanisms that run this fucking country? you got to be kidding. Joe Biden couldn't run a goddamn McDonald's. I'm not fucking joking. He couldn't fucking plot the takeover of a daycare. Well, maybe you could, one mile station at a time. But it's just not a good idea either way. Bad analogy. Oh, I went to the petting zoo. <laughs> no, that was a daycare, Joe. There's no shred of evidence that any politician ever born ever in the history, no matter how well they were loved, that could be fucking trusted. Not one of them. They never keep their promises. They don't have the interest of the people in mind. They never will have the interest of the people in mind. They represent the money that put them in office. And again, middlemen. <coughs> it's your job as a citizen to fuck this whole idea of nationality and citizenry and whatever. It's not even your job as a citizen. Let's strip all that bullshit right away from it. It is your job as a human not to give power to evil people. Now, let's simplify this. Let's pretend this is 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, and you live in a remote town. And you can buy milk from two different people. One of those people struggles hard, works real hard, and doesn't have the greatest of milk, but it's a little cheaper. The other guy in town has a bunch of people that are indentured servants, and they do all the work for him. And he's pretty rough on them and keeps them in line, and he's got really high-quality milk that's slightly more expensive. Who are you going to buy the milk from? Even if the prices are reversed. And the guy who uses slave labor, his milk is fucking way cheaper. That's a better analogy. Because still, you don't buy the milk from the fucking cocksucking asshole that has slaves. You find a railroad of some kind. It works the same way today. Tesla's out there burning holes in the fucking atmosphere, playing with his goddamn dildo toys. Doing nothing. Why are you giving him your money? He's a fucking Nimrod. I don't know one good thing that fucking Jeff Bezos has ever done for the world. I can't even figure out what Amazon does other than host a website and a whole bunch of facilities that sort packages. They're like a giant back room at the post office. That's all they are. It's weird. Worthless. That's it. That's story time, my dog.
And as usual, it turns into a rant about how this fucking system over and over and over again has showed me that you can't trust people to guide themselves. Somebody needs to take the fucking reins. And hopefully it's somebody with a good plan. Because the loony motherfuckers that have the plan now that are fucking implementing their plan mutually assured destruction is their plan. <laughs> you want to know what their plan is? Read the book of Revelations. That's their fucking plan. Get back to me.